Hello everybody, welcome back to Giles Honey. I am David and uh, for those of you who don't know, I uh, got a couple of beehives down here, nine of them to be precise, that we're trying to get through the winter. Oh, there's a bee flying right there. So that, that makes me pretty freaking happy. Uh, it's still cold out. It's uh, about 32 degrees Fahrenheit, so that'd be around zero Celsius. Let me see if I can, oh, it's not gonna let me flip the camera around. That kind of sucks, but maybe I'll stop it and uh, start another one flipped around. But uh, as you can see, I don't know if you can see or not. I'll, I'll just flip the camera around here in a few minutes, but uh, uh, we're down here checking them out. I see bees have been out doing their cleansing flights and everything. And I see a couple of bees that are actually out moving around, uh, even though it's cold. So pretty happy about that. So let me let me flip this camera around and we'll show you what I got going on. All right, so if I can do this without making people sick from all the wobbling cameras. I know that's one of the things someone brought up before, but you can see these black dots out here on the snow. There are all the bees out doing their cleansing flights. And that and just coming out to die, some of the older ones. So pretty happy about the, how things have been going this, so far this year. And uh, as you can see, you see, so I keep coming up cleaning off the landing boards and I keep seeing bees, dead bees being pushed out. So that's, that's actually a really good sign. I'm pretty happy about that. So um, you see all the dead bees out here on the ground. That's just normal, normal die off throughout the winter. I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, some of these, I mean, bees in the wintertime will live a little bit longer than the summer bees, quite a bit longer actually. And, uh, uh, but they still don't, you know, survive as long as, as we would like. Some of them will go up to four or five, five and a half months, and that's about it. That's all they got in them. So they're just storing up all their energy, waiting for that spring to break so that they can push all their energy right into that initial uh, queen laying phase that happens just as soon as the weather breaks and, and the bees can start moving around again. So uh, anyways, let's uh, let's go ahead and go inside. We're not, now that we know we I see bees flying and I see them moving around. One thing I don't like, as you can see right here, um, all that that bee, bee poo, those, those dark spots. I don't like seeing it dark like that. As, as long as it's just a little, I'm okay. But when we start seeing a ton of that coming out of the entrances, uh, that that uh, is a sign that there's some uh, digestive nosema dysentery pro type problems and we don't want that but uh, a little bit of it we can tolerate but we'll we'll see how it goes here in the next we got five weeks to go so anyways let's go ahead inside and take a look so in the barn this is basically all my equipment and uh, i'm running nine hides going into the winter but i'm prepared now uh, to go up to about twice that next year so between all my five frames, and then I got the uh, the 10 frame uh, deeps and honey supers behind that. Some of the other things I've been been getting ready is uh, I want to do some queen rearing this year, and uh, so I'm going to do a lot of these two frame two frame boxes. Let's see if I can flip this over. What's going on? Oops, sorry about that. Loud, loud bangs. So basically, I'm going to use these two instead of using like mini mating nukes. I'm just building these two frame. Uh, nukes to use as my queen mating and they're relatively easy to build this is uh, Directions all over the internet uh, all over YouTube on how to build them But uh, I want to get about ten of these going so that I can be attempting to mate ten ten queens at a time and I've already got the uh, The incubators and stuff like that and the uh, grafting Equipment so that I can do a little bit of grafting. I've got a war a hive that I built years ago that I used one year and haven't used since um, the one year I did use it, uh, the bees, when it cut towards fall, just, uh, were they, uh, absconded, I, I guess is the word, or they just up and left, uh, which was a little weird because they had plenty of food and everything in it. Um, and then the other experiment I got going on is I, I stumbled across some Japanese style beehives online, which kind of fascinated me because they even, you know, the ware kind of simulates a, a tree, a tree trunk. The Japanese takes it one step further and, and really, I mean, it's it's just a square. Um, and then they just harvest it similar to a ware. The only difference is uh, a ware uses a top bar, vertical top bar approach. Uh, whereas the Japanese doesn't use a frame at all. They don't use it, which 
it's my understanding in North America, uh, you have to have an inspectable hive. You can't have things like this. So I'm building this out and I'm gonna to try to modify it to kind of a hybrid between a war ray and a Japanese hive. And that way there I can uh, get in and inspect it if I can. It's just kind of an experiment right for now. I, I don't believe that's gonna be part of my main production. You know, as I, as I build up a little bit more, that's just me having a little bit of fun and, and learning a little bit. But anyways, that's kind of where we're at. And uh, we are anxiously awaiting spring. Uh, we're getting ready to make our first purchase of uh, uh, pollen and some sugar to get ready to feed the bees here in about oh, four or five weeks when, when the weather starts breaking. We're, we're hoping for an early spring. And then we're going we're gonna to start pushing hard for uh, expanding our operation uh, so that we can uh, not only sell the honey uh, and the bees, but uh, like if you followed my other videos, we're, we're looking at the possibility of getting into mead, mead making as part of our business. So um, there we have it. So thanks for watching. Uh, I don't know if it was, uh, hopefully it was a little informative to, to see how, how it's like to keep bees in the colder climates. It's a little bit different than some of you guys down in North Carolina and over in Australia and England and things like that. But uh, you know, uh, I, I, that's one thing I like about YouTube is where we can get together and collaborate and, uh, you know, see, see how people do it and, and try to get ideas from there. But, uh, so anyways, thanks for watching.